Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is the next video in the modern design experiences with UiPath. And today we are going to discuss about the foreground and the background processes. In case you are coming to the channel for the first time and you haven't already subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel to get the latest updates. Before this video in the playlist, we have already seen the basics of classic versus modern design, targeting methods, understanding the application, browser activities. We also have seen which design is better. I personally consider the modern design and why, what are the advantages. All of that we have seen in a step by step manner. So in case you are coming and you do not have a background of modern folders, you can watch this complete playlist and get all the knowledge you require to work with modern folders. Today, we are going to discuss about the foreground and the background processes. So the first thing first, what is the difference between a foreground and a background process? Foreground process are the tasks that are currently actively executed and are interacted by the user. So whatever you see, happening on the screen as a user and the robot performing and while the robot is performing you also can give some inputs that is called a foreground process for example if you are typing on a word processor or you are typing in a word application that is a foreground process because if you are not able to see the word application you won't be able to type you cannot type if the word application is minimized if it is not visible on the screen and i ask you to go and type in the word you cannot do it right because it's not visible you cannot create a presentation if it is minimized so i minimize the ppt and i say that okay now go and create the ppt you won't be able to do that because that is a foreground process typing into the word processor creating of an ppt all of that comes in the foreground process because these processes are responsive you need to provide inputs to them so all such kind of things are called foreground processes the other one is called a background process. Now these are the tasks which are running in the background and it does not require any user interaction, which simply means such as system maintenance. Whenever you are getting an update in your windows, your windows start updating, right? And it happens in the background. It is updating in the background. You directly get a pop up that yes, there has something which has happened. If I copy paste some data from one folder to another, I just copy, do a control plus V, I can minimize and it can happen in the background. That does not require a human intervention or a direct user interaction. All the such things are called background processes, right? So foreground versus background processes. Now I want to take a pause and I want you guys to just comment down one example of foreground and one example of background process so that I can understand that yes, you guys understood the basic difference between foreground and the background process. All you have to do is just comment one example of foreground process and one example of background process. Okay, I'll wait for your comments. And next, in UiPath, whenever I talk about UiPath, I'm talking about the robots. These are the characteristics of foreground process and these are the characteristics of background process right example typing into document antivirus scan file backup these are the example if i talk about the visibility right these foreground process are visible and interactive background process are not visible resource usage this is important whenever we are using a foreground process it uses the computer resources which are actively being used which means that if I'm typing on a document, that means that I am utilizing the word scope. Background processes use the resources, but at a lower priority. Here, the resource uses is at higher priority. Okay. If I talk about the interruption, because it is running, the robot is running, somebody is doing typing on the screen, right? I can actually go and interrupt. I can simply close the word application. I can minimize it, right? So whenever a process is working in foreground, it has a risk of getting interrupted by the user. 
whereas the background process cannot be interrupted once it started it's starting executing in the background yes you can definitely go and close the robot altogether that is a different part but if i talk about the process altogether right if there were 10 steps that which the process was supposed to do in the background as a user you cannot interrupt it the third thing is user attention foreground process requires user attention where it does not require immediate user attention that is why it is called a background process foreground process is something like an attended automation where you are able to see what is happening on the screen and if required you can actually provide your input or your attention okay so this is the difference between foreground and the background in terms of the processes now let's go to ui path and see all of that in action with an example okay so I am back into my UiPath studio and I have cleaned my main. So this is the same project guys, modern design, which we have been working for quite a long. As you can see, this is our modern design experiences. So not spending much time here. So let's say today I have a task of automating this notepad. Okay. So I have this notepad application here, which I want to execute both in foreground as well as in the background. And we are going to see where exactly these properties are available. Okay. So I'll go to the activities and the first thing first, we want to interact with this notepad. So first activity, which we have to use is use application slash browser. Okay. This one, because that is the basic of modern design. Okay. Now we have already explained all of these properties in detail in the previous video. So this video, we are particularly focusing on fo uh, foreground versus the background. Okay. So I'll take this here. I'll say indicate the application to automate and I'll point it to this guy, which is called the notepad. Okay. It has got the context. Now, what do you want to do? So for my example, I simply want to, let's say click. Okay, I simply want to click on something inside the notepad. Let's say I want to click on this file button. Okay, so automatically generated and I say confirm. That's it. Okay. Now, if you notice here, as of now, I have not specified whether I want to run this in the foreground or I want to run this in the background. Now, where exactly that setting is available? Whenever you use any container, which is a must for the modern activities, which is use application slash browser. If you go to the properties here, you have something which is called input mode. Okay. In the properties here in the use application properties, you have something which is called input mode. And here you would notice that you have one, two, three, four, five options which are available. Now, if you are coming from a classic experience there, we would used to have hardware, simulate type, simulate click and uh, send window messages, right? These three are available, but here I have a new one, which is called background. So today I am going to explain you all of that in a step by step manner so that you understand when to use what. Okay. So if you see here by default, whenever you have created, it's selected as hardware events. Now, whatever I have specified at the container level, the same actually is applied by default to these activities, right? So this was just for attaching the notepad. And this click activity is actually doing the click. Now, if I go to the particular click activity and I go to the properties, the click activity has also something which is called input mode here at the bottom, see in the options. And here it is set as same as app browser, which means that whatever you have applied here, that automatically applies to this also. Now this is pretty handy when you have a lot of activities, right? Let's say I have 15, 20, 25 activities and I do not want to change all of them. I can just change it at the container level and all the activities will get the same settings. Okay. If you want to change it, you always has an option to change it at the activity level as well. Okay. However, I would recommend you to play with the container so that you 
save a lot of work but some of the examples if this not work you can actually specify the individual settings as well okay so now what we have seen is that whenever i indicate any element we get something which is called options this option is applicable both at the container as well as the activity level and both of the level has something which is called input mode here it is specified as these options right let's quickly see all these options in theory and then one by one we'll come back and we'll see it in practical also input mode we have selected the robot by default select does the one this time the robot has selected for hardware events whenever i say hardware event it is going to use the hardware driver to perform this action hardware driver to perform this action this is the slowest method exactly the same concept which we have in the classic design right this is the slowest method and it cannot work in the background if you see here it cannot work in the background but it is compatible with the desktop apps okay here it says that it cannot work in the background now what does that mean background simply means if i lock my computer this activity will not work okay let's see that in action okay and this was the by default by the way which uipath has selected for us okay i'll escape this and we are exploring the hardware events so this is our notepad okay i'll go here and i'll say run the file if everything goes well what should happen it should actually click on the file button and if it does not work you are definitely going to get a selector not found exception right after 30 seconds and you can see it was able to click on that file button okay there is one other thing which i wanted to show you so this is my notepad i minimize this and i just open this chrome browser okay so this was my notepad i minimize this and in the foreground now i have my chrome browser which we have this videos right now if i go here and i say run the file okay the hardware event was able to put it in the foreground and it was still able to click it right but my screen is unlocked okay so this was the automation which is working with hardware events and it was running perfectly if i am running it in attended mode however in the presentation it shows that it is the slowest and it cannot work in the background now to test in the background we have to run it from the orchestrator and log this computer okay so please note here i am in the unattended folder i go here and i click on this button which is publish so we are sending this project which is called modern design to my orchestrator i'll hit next next and i'll say publish okay this automation is now going to orchestrator and now what we are going to do we are going to lock this computer and i am going to trigger the automation from a different machine or a different orchestrator so let's go to the orchestrator okay so this is my uh, same orchestrator which i am connected to the name of the folder is unattended folder so let me quickly go here in the unattended folder uh, it should be here so i need to create a process the name of the process is modern design so i'll go here i'll say add a process okay and here i need to select the package which is called modern design right we just uploaded it right and the version is 1.0.3 everything i leave to the default settings i'll hit next next i'll leave this to the default setting and i'll hit create okay and i'll say close okay so we have deployed our automation to unattended folder which is inside this tenant okay now a uh, quick information in case you are new to orchestrator and you do not understand what is tenant what is folder how do you manage the automation job triggers deploy setting up unattended robot i have launched a new course with an academy which is live on their platform you can always go and purchase that course and learn about the basics of orchestrator in a step by step manner and the good part is for the first 100 students we have kept a discount of 35% so in case if you are looking to know more about this unattended orchestrator tenant folder jobs assets 
you will get everything in that course right i'll post the link in the description for your reference okay so now we have got the process here which is called modern design now to execute this process i'll go here and i click on this button which says start a job okay and this is the modern design i want to run it in an unattended robot right because we want to try it in the background right and if i say here start a job right so first thing first guys i have already set up my unattended robot in case you don't understand we have a dedicated video explaining the setup of unattended robot please do refer to get your unattended robot setup right so now if you see here i am running this automation in an unattended license right and what should happen that this command will now go to our uipath assistant which is this guy here modern design it should start running now and you can see it is still pending i'll just hit a quick refresh it says it is running and it clicked on the file button right now you would say that mukesh you were able to run it from the orchestrator now yes i was able to run it from the orchestrator but my machine was unlocked you could see it in the happening right the actual test will happen when i say that i actually lock the machine okay okay so now i have locked this computer okay and now what i am going to do is i am going to execute this automation from my tablet okay so i have opened the same orchestrator in a tablet right so this is the screen of my tablet where i have configured the same orchestrator by the way you also can get it on your android as well as on your ios devices okay so i go here and as you can see this is the same folder which is called the unattended folder i'll go to the jobs okay and this was the job which we recently did right it was successful manually right now let me just go to the job and you can see that it was successfully completed right so i'll go here and i'll say restart the job now on the machine you would notice that the machine is locked okay are you sure you want to start this job i'll say yes the job has created okay you can see here it is pending and i'll hit a quick refresh here like this to see what is happening right as you can see it is running and let's see whether it is successful or not right we have set up it to the hardware events and as per the definition hardware event should not work in the background okay and you would notice that you have got an error message which says that the automation has failed okay let's go to the machine and see what has happened i am back into my computer and as you can see that the automation has faulted okay if i click on this i button you would notice that i have got an error saying that the cannot bring the target application in the foreground because the window session is locked okay and for this job of modern design i was using if i go here if you notice i was using the hardware events so that confirms me that the hardware events is not working in the background it cannot work in the background but it is compatible with the desktop apps and again when i say background i do not mean minimize i mean the machine is locked okay the second one here is called the simulate when you say it means simulate using the accessibilities api application programming interface simulate is recommended for browser java based applications and sap okay usually it is more reliable than the hardware events here it was slowest it works with all the desktop apps but if i have to use with some browser java based application and sap uipath recommends to use the hard uh, simulate and which is more reliable than the hardware events now how does it works send all the text in a single action work even if the target app is not in the focus if it is not in the focus then also it can work so what do you mean by focus 
focus simply means that if i have something on top of that screen then also simulate is able to work right but the question arises would simulate work in the background that we need to validate okay so i'll go back to my uipath studio here i am back this is the same automation this is a notepad i'll go here and now i am going to change this to simulate i'll do a control plus s okay saved this is our application let's first try to run it in the studio okay and i'll bring this orchestrator in front i'll minimize this now here i am getting an error which says that click with simulate is not supported for this element please use any other input methods why because simulate is working for the browsers okay so if i go here you would notice simulate recommended for browser and java based application and sap so here simulate does not work in the model it says me that i am not able to use simulate for this element however if i use the same thing for a browser it would work okay so i'll quickly go and show you with the help of a browser so this is my edge browser okay so i'll go and i'll comment this notepad and in the activities i am going to take a another use application slash browser drag and drop it here indicate application to automate okay i'll point it to our this browser okay edge and now i simply want to do a click operation so i'll go here and i'll use something which is called a click drag and drop it here indicate on the edge and let's say i point it on this button which is google search okay and i say confirm automation is ready now we are running it from orchestrator so i am going to put a log message activity here so that we are able to differentiate right so i'll say that this is simulate i'll make it to info okay so that we are able to see this log in orchestrator as well okay so now let's go here and this is my browser but on the top of that browser i am putting this i'll minimize this okay and uh, if i go to the use application slash browser to the properties i'll change it to simulate okay i'll do a control plus s i'll go here and i'll say run the file okay so whenever modern activities are working by default they select the exact one for you which they believe is the correct approach right now if you see here the automation was successful okay i did not get any error i got this is simulate and it did a google search as well okay now one thing to notice here this this thing was not brought to the foreground whereas the hardware was bringing the elements to the foreground right so this was in the background right uh, this is orchestrator which is in a chrome browser i'll again minimize this okay uh, to test this let me do one thing right let's try to indicate it to the gmail right so that we understand that yes it was open so i'll click on the gmail right so if gmail is open then we would understand that yes it has worked in the background also not background in the minimize mode okay so i have changed it right now thing to notice this is minimized in the front screen i have my chrome which is opening my orchestrator if i go here and i say run the file you would notice that all of the simulate action will happen in the background and it does not bring it to the foreground right whereas in the hardware the notepad was popping up right see automation started it is doing something on the screen and 
completed okay so here as you can see that it has opened the gmail okay so i can go back to the main screen right so that means that the simulate does not bring the element to the foreground now the next question if i publish this and run it in the background will it work so the new version is 1.0.4 i'll hit next next and publish okay because if i want to test it i need to republish this version right and this is for the test of simulate okay so simulate was not working with notepad so i have chosen to work with a browser now 1.0.4 i'll hit okay go back to my orchestrator in the processes modern design i'll say upgrade to the latest version which would be now 1.0.4 next we are going to run this automation in a logged machine so this is the browser i'll minimize this this is our orchestrator i am now going to log this machine and the next what we are going to do is we are going to trigger this automation from our orchestrator right so here i log the machine back into the orchestrator i'll go to the jobs and i'll just restart the job but this time we are going to run it in the simulate we have also added a log which is called simulate so that should come here right so i have created the job as you can see the last entry is what it shows the job is pending now it's running and it's successful if everything goes well we should be able to see the log which is this is simulate let's go to the logs with the logs and as you can see in the second entry i can see that this is simulate which indicates that when i change my input to simulate it was able to work even if the machine was locked let's validate the same inside the machine now in my machine in my orchestrator i can see that this is successful one minute ago i can go here we can click on view this logs and the same logs are visible here executed this is simulate and this if i go to the browser you would notice that the gmail is available here which means that we were successfully able to execute the automation in the simulate mode as well okay so coming back to the presentation we have seen hardware we have seen the simulate simulates the accessibility is api recommended for browser we have seen that it was not working with the notepad and it works in the background even if the target app is not in focus right so simulate works in the background hardware does not work in the background okay now there is a one more third option which is called chromium api which is applicable for the applications which are working on chromium based approach such as google chrome and edge so whenever you would notice that we are doing any automations by default the browser automations are selected as chromium apis right so this is the option which is called chromium apis applicable to the browsers so if i go back to our automation which is this okay and let's try to reindicate to the browser right how do you do that you click on these three buttons and you say indicate target and i just indicate it to the browser again now if i go to the properties you would notice that the input mode is selected as chromium api for the browsers okay and this also works in the background so i would request you guys to go ahead and try this on your own so that you understand it okay the fourth one is called the windows messages right the same concept which we see in the classic is available here which is called window messages simulate using the windows 32 recommended for desktop apps usually more reliable than the hardware events okay work even if the target app is not in focus but it does not talk about whether this would work in background or not for the simulate what we have seen that the simulate was able to work in the background but it was not working with the notepad now this guy says that my name is windows application and i can work with the hardware events but 
you need to test and it is recommended for desktop app so our browser our notepad is a desktop app so next we want to see how does the windows messages behave okay i am back into my uipath studio and now we are going to test it with the help of windows messages okay so i'll just minimize i would say disable this browser and i'll re enable my notepad application and now here this is our notepad application our notepad was there we need to click on the file button the only thing i am going to change is i'll go to the properties and i'll update this to now windows messages right now whatever you are looking on the screen is visible on here as well right so you don't have to remember it you can just come here and read about these things here as well right so as you can see for hardware event it says like it acts like a normal hardware such as a keyboard or a mouse hardware events are triggered and our operating system that's why it does not work in the background right for simulate we have just seen that it is more reliable on the browser and was not working in the notepad the next one is chrome web api works mostly on chrome and edge as i have already told you and that fourth one is windows messages where it says that recommended for desktop apps more reliable than hardware but we need to check whether it will work in background or not okay so i have selected here window messages i'll save everything so the first test is i'll minimize i'll uh, keep this orchestrator in front and i'll go to my studio and i'll say run the file right now the notepad is minimized it's not in the background but it is minimized and we wanted to see whether the window messages is able to run even if it is minimized or not as you can see it brought it to the front and it was able to click that right so that is working now we want to see that whether this works in the background or not so what i am going to do is i am going to put a log message here i'll say this is window message spelling okay and the log level i would select it as info save this and we need to republish it right because till the time you won't publish you won't see the latest code okay so i'll say next and publish we'll just wait for the publish deployed successfully the new version is 1.0.5 okay i'll hit okay i'll go back to the orchestrator we need to upgrade the process also right otherwise it will still going to run in 1.0.4 i'll go to the processes and in here 1.0.4 i'll click on this three dots and i'll say upgrade to the latest version and i say confirm now it is on 1.0.5 okay now what we have to do the same thing we will lock the machine and then we will run it from the background back to the orchestrator and let's quickly restart any one of the job i'll go to the job and i'll simply click on the button which says restart the job and we'll just wait for the execution this time we are testing for the window messages keep an eye on the last job which is in pending once it is allocated then it would be in the running state now as we can see the process is running and we are testing for the window messages whether it would run in the background for notepad or not and still running and now it is faulted right let's see the error what we have got and in the log i can see that i have got a error which says that cannot bring the target method to the foreground let's go to the machine and see the logs okay so this is the jobs panel it faulted 2 minutes ago i'll go here and i'll say view the logs and you can see that modern design executed it ended right but i'm strange why we are not getting the log okay so the log which we have mentioned is this is window message i was expecting that log to be available okay but that log message is inside this use application slash this one right so it broke at this activity only right that's why this log never came now that answers okay so now it says that your use application activity i was not able to bring it to the foreground that is why i am not able to execute the automation right 
so which means that which means that hardware was not able to work in the background slowest method window message is better than hardware but it is still not able to work in the background now a question arises if i have a requirement where i want to run an automation in the background what should i do chromium simulate works in the background but it is not working for notepad like applications right now the last option where you have is called the background which simply means runs the action in the background try to use either simulate or chromium api wherever possible if chromium api or simulate is working use this if both of them are not working then go and use this background okay so now let's try to run our automation in the background input mode the same automation okay i'll go back to the automation now which is this in the this one window messages now i'll select the background i'll save this and this time this log message let me put it at the top right so that we every time get this message and in the use notepad slash activity let me quickly go here and uh, i will take an activity which is called type into i'll drag and drop it here and this time i want to type something on this notepad i'll say confirm and let's say i want to type here background i'll save this and now this time the input method which we are going to use should be the background okay so this is background i have a message here use application go to the properties uh, here it is selected as background in the type into also i'll go to the properties and we would notice that it is here same as the app browser okay now the first test is let's minimize this i will keep our orchestrator in the front right still logging so what we are going to do is let's go here and try to see it in the attended mode i'll go here and i'll say run the file now this is we have set up this in the background mode okay and if everything works well we should be able to see the notepad typing hello in that okay automation started and the thing to notice the automation was completed and here you could see that it has printed in the background but this was not bring to the front right this was not brought to the front everything happens in the background okay i'll minimize this now the same test we want to do if i log this computer would it be able to do the same so for that we need to publish this again to the orchestrator i'll click on publish the new version is 1.0.7 i'll hit publish it's successfully published let's go back to the orchestrator i'll go to the tenant okay and uh, we are in that uh, unattended folder so we need to upgrade the process right process version so i'll go to the processes and you could see that it's working on 0.6 i'll go here and i'll say update to the latest version and i'll say confirm okay now this automation is in the 1.0.7 the input method is login okay now the thing which we want to do is we want to lock this computer and we would see what happens if we run it in the lock mode okay so next we are going to lock this computer and we will see the execution back into my orchestrator i'll go to the unattended folder because that is the folder where we have been working on i'll select the folder and this time we are testing for the background mode okay i'll go to the jobs 
and I'll select any one of the job to just restart it. Okay, so I'll say restart the job. I'll hit that restart button at the bottom and say yes and we'll just wait for the execution in the background mode. As we can see at the bottom, the last one is the modern design job, which is in the running state. We'll just wait for the execution to get completed and then we validate the logs. Okay. And I'll hit a quick refresh and the process is completed. Okay. Now let's quickly validate the logs. So I'll open the job and I'll click on this button, which says view the logs. And as you can see here, the second one says this is background, right? Which indicates that it was able to successfully run in the background. The same logs we can actually now validate in our machine as well. So I'm in the unattended folder. We'll go to the jobs. And here, as you can see, one minute ago, this was successful. To validate, we can click on these three dots, view the logs, modern design. This is in the background and it was completed. In my notepad, you could see that the robot has written background and all of this happened when the machine was in the logged state. Okay, so that was the fifth one, which is called the background. Okay, so these are all the input methods. Let's have a quick recap. Okay, so today we have seen that we have input mode, which is at the container level as well as at the activity level. Whatever I set at the container level, by default, UiPath set it at the activity level also, but as a developer, you can change it. We have seen that hardware events was the first type which was able to do all the operation. It was the slowest, but it cannot work in the background. Okay. It does not work in the background. The next one was simulate, which was not able to work with the notepad. So what we did to explore this feature, we tried to do with the help of browser. And we found out that with the help of browser, it was able to work in the background. The third one is Chromium API, which specifically is meant to work for the browsers, which is Edge and the Chrome. And whenever by default, you create an automation, you will get the Chromium API. The fourth one was Windows messages where simulate type and simulate click was used. It is recommended for all the desktop application. It is more reliable than the hardware events. And this was also not able to work in the background. But for all of this, UiPath has this line which says that please test if your target application support this. So there is no fixed rule defined that your application should be using hardware or simulate or window messages, right? But we have seen that for notepad, none of them was able to work in the background. So I switched to the last one, which was called background and I was able to use it in the background. For all of this, one thing is very much common, which UiPath has mentioned is that we need to try all of them and then we select the correct approach. There is no fixed line that if you are using this application, you should go by this approach. All of this has different capabilities and on different target app, the behavior might be different. So as a developer, you should be aware that where actually you can change this, right? So that was the complete agenda, which we wanted to discuss today. I hope this was insightful and it will help you to make decision whether to select which input mode. Okay. So that is all for this video. I would like to wrap this video here. I hope this was insightful. If you have any more questions, any more doubts, feel free to write me in the comments or you can also drop me an email as well. I would appreciate your feedback on the video and tell me in the comments what would be the next topic or next video you want to see. So with that, I would wrap this video here. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please do subscribe to the channel and Happy automation.